my name is James Bean. Welcome to Spiritual Awakening Radio and a podcast title today, Loaves Without the Fishes in Early Christian Writings. Another installment of my ongoing vegan veg series exploring vegetarian references or vegan quotes in the world scriptures and various traditions, as of late, especially Christianity. There are a few different podcasts exploring the vegetarianism of the original Jesus movement, sometimes called the great-great-grandchildren of the Essenes, Nazareans, Ebionites, Judaic Christians, Jewish Christians, or the Hebrew Christians, those uh, original disciples and relatives of Jesus led by James the Just in Jerusalem, that Jewish Christian community, Christianity before Paul. They were vegetarians. Keith Akers has a great book about them called Disciples, another good book on the vegetarianism of the early Jesus movement by Keith Akers is called The Lost Religion of Jesus. The author John Davidson has an encyclopedic, gigantic, thousand-page book called The Gospel of Jesus in Search of His Original Teachings. And I'm holding in my hand a copy of a, of a book called The Origin of Christianity by Charles Vaklovic, another good one on this topic. Keith Akers gives a good review of this book, giving it five stars and saying, quote, this is a self-published book, but it is basically the only thing in English discussing, among many other things, the relationship between the Pythagoreans and early Christianity. An earlier, shorter version was titled The Vegetarianism of Jesus Christ. And I begin this program with a reading from The Origin of Christianity by Charles Vaklovic, where he makes a fascinating observation about the writings of the early church father Irenaeus. The New Testament records the feeding of the 5,000 and the 4,000. However, Irenaeus, who wrote his great thesis against heresies between 180 and 188 AD states, quote, he there seeing a great crowd had followed him, fed all that multitude with five loaves of bread and 12 baskets of fragments remained over and above, unquote. Charles Vaklovic no mention is made of fish being served. Again, later, the same author states, again, this is Irenaeus, the early church father, in his book Against Heresies, Our Lord, after blessing the five loaves, fed with them 5,000 men, unquote. In the second reference as well as the first, Irenaeus fails to mention fish. Could it be that early copies of our Gospels did not include fish being served in the accounts of the feeding of the 5,000 and the 4,000, and that later copyists added this item because it would enhance the miracle in their eyes? Was the menu expanded to include fish merely because the copyist conceived that bread and fish was a basic meal that anyone in that day, in that uh, era, was expected to eat without any intent to include a carnivorous diet into Jesus's life? Then there is the possibility that the inclusion of fish in the miracle was a direct effort by meat-eating Christians to have Jesus pictured as a meat-eater as well, in defiance of the Judaic Christian tradition of him being a vegetarian. Nevertheless, since fish appears in the menu of the feeding of the 5,000, an appearance that occurred after 188 AD, when Irenaeus included the miracle in his book Against Heresies, I must come to the following conclusion. Later copyists of the New Testament altered the text to specifically state that Jesus fed the 5,000 and the 4,000 with bread and fish, while the original form of the Gospels, as well as the Judaic Christian tradition, included no other item than bread." Unquote. A reading from the book, The Origin of Christianity by Charles Vaklovic. The author Keith Akers also explores this question. I have a few different quotes from Keith Akers. 
The following is from his book, The Lost Religion of Jesus, Simple Living and Nonviolence in Early Christianity. The most well-known instance of Jesus serving fish to others is the feeding of the multitudes with loaves and fishes, Matthew 14, Matthew 15, and parallels. However, several references to the feeding of the 5,000 outside the Bible eliminate fish from the menu. Irenaeus, in his book written in the second century, twice states that Jesus fed the multitude with bread alone. Once again, Against Heresies 2.22.3 and the other reference in Against Heresies is 2.24.4. Arnobius refers to the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 in the same way, without mentioning fish. His fishless reference to the feeding of the 5,000 is in a book called Against the Heathen 1.46 by Arnobius. The early church historian Eusebius also refers to this miracle without mentioning the fish in his book, Proof of the Gospel, 3-4. Thus, three ancient authors in four different places refer to the feeding of the multitude by referring to bread only and conspicuously omitting fish. Indeed, even in the Gospels, Jesus refers back to this incident only by mentioning the bread, not fish. Quote, do you not remember the loaves, the five loaves of the 5,000 or the seven loaves of the 4,000? Matthew 16, 9 through 10 and Mark 8, verses 18 through 20. The repeated mention of the story by several diverse church fathers and even by Jesus himself without fish strongly suggests that the original tradition did not include fish as recorded in our canonical Gospels. The bread is everywhere remembered, but the fish is omitted on numerous occasions. Most likely, later redactors added fish to the story when only bread was recorded in the original translation, but forgot to also insert fish in the passages where Jesus refers back to the miraculous feeding of the multitudes. A reading from the Lost Religion of Jesus, Simple Living and Nonviolence in Early Christianity by Keith Akers. John Davidson, in his amazing book, The Gospel of Jesus in Search of His Original Teachings, also explores this question. Whenever the question of Jesus being vegetarian is discussed, people will always ask, what about the miracles of the loaves and the fishes? We have already discussed Jesus' miracles in another chapter, but it is of interest to observe here that early references to these two miracles characteristically omit all mention of fish. A Coptic fragment of an unidentified gospel from Egypt, for example, has Jesus speak of a number of his miracles, including the observation, quote, I have parted a few loaves and satisfied many, unquote. Similarly, the Acts of Thomas speaks of Jesus, quote, satisfying many thousands with bread, unquote. While the history of John says, he satisfied 4,000 men besides women and children with 5,000 loaves of barley meal, and they ate and left some over and carried and conveyed to their homes as much as they were able. A reference from, a quote from the history of John. No mention at all is made of fish, but perhaps even more significant is the late second century testimony of Irenaeus. On the two occasions where he refers to these miracles in his Against Heresies, he speaks only of loaves, fish making no appearance whatsoever. His first description is in a long dissertation on the gospel miracles of Jesus, each one being mentioned with all its relevant details. Knowing Irenaeus's anti-vegetarian views, he is hardly likely to have missed an opportunity to put fish into Jesus' mouth. Yet he writes, quote, 
again withdrawing hence to the other side of the Sea of Tiberias, he there, seeing a great crowd, had followed him, fed all that multitude with five loaves of bread and twelve baskets of fragments remained over and above." Unquote. And our Lord, after blessing the five loaves, fed th five thousand men with them. Unquote. Two references to, once again, against heresies by the early church father Irenaeus, not mentioning the fish. The missing fish. What about those pesky pescatarian fishes and loaves? This is from my article on the vegetarianism of early Christianity. The original version of the feeding of the multitude story only refers to bread, not bread with fish. Fish apparently got added to some gospel manuscripts later on. Keith Akers points out the existence of different versions of the biblical story, the feeding of the 5,000 or the multitude. Quote, if you look at other accounts of the same incident, if you look, for example, at the early church fathers who also talk about these stories, Irenaeus mentions the feeding of the 5,000, Eusebius also mentions that, and Arnobius, another early church writer, also discusses Jesus' feeding of the multitude, the miraculous feeding of the multitude. And yet, in every case, they discuss the bread, but they don't mention anything about fish. So I think that fish is a later addition. In fact, if you even look at the New Testament, it says at another point when Jesus is talking about the feeding of the 5,000, he says, don't you remember when I fed the multitudes and all the bread that we took up? And he doesn't mention the fish. That's from Keith Akers' website, CompassionateSpirit.com. Also see his article, Was Jesus a Vegetarian? Also to be found at the Compassionate Spirit website, CompassionateSpirit.com. Matthew 16, 9's loaves without any mention of fish. Do you not yet perceive, do you not remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Unquote. No fish included with the loaves there. Mark 8, 16 through 21, again, another example of bread, but no fish being mentioned in connection with the feeding of the 5,000. Irenaeus lived during the second century and described in detail the miracle of the multitude being fed with bread, no mention whatsoever of fish. Eusebius and Arnobius also never mentioned fish with the loaves, only the loaves of bread. And now I found a few more references in early Christian apocryphal writings, again mentioning the bread, but not the fish. As if the New Testament they were reading at the time, the feeding of the 5,000 story did not include any fish because the fish hadn't been inserted into the Greek gospel manuscripts yet. As it now stands in the New Testament gospels, the bread is everywhere present, as Keith Akers writes, but the fish only sometimes. This strongly suggests that the original tradition was about distribution of bread, not bread and fish. In the case of Matthew 16, 9 through 10, the insertion of fish becomes obvious because the editors of Matthew changed the original story to include fish, but forgot to change Jesus' backward reference." Unquote. That's from an article by Keith Akers called The Fish Stories in the New Testament, also available at CompassionateSpirit.com, his Compassionate Spirit website. Well, the idea of fish being added to a Greek manuscript sometime after the year 188 AD, I mean, we're using Irenaeus, we're looking through Irenaeus's eyes at the gospel that he had sometime during the 180s, and Eusebius and other early church writings, seeing through their eyes only reference to bread but not the fish. That's called a textual variation when something gets added to a Greek manuscript. If you have 15 different manuscripts, Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, they don't all read the same. There are variations between one and another, missing verses, words added here, words not included there, even part of a chapter in the case of Mark chapter 16. 
some serious differences between these different manuscripts. There are actually many examples of textual variations in the diversity of New Testament manuscripts with words or phrases either being added or omitted. In the New Testament manuscripts, while there are some textual variations throughout, by far the majority of variations occur with the four Gospels and the Book of Acts, and that makes sense. With the letters or epistles of, of Paul, you know, you just have Paul writing these letters, they go out to various churches, and that's pretty much it. However, in the case of the Gospels, it's a much more complex literary situation with people copying down sayings of Jesus, and there are miracle stories of Jesus, and these get quoted by other Gospel writers. One Gospel is influenced or quotes another. It's a much more complex situation with various uh, stories and accounts passing through many hands, so it makes sense that there are much more variations, a much more fluid tradition in the early days of the manuscripts of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Acts. The most spectacular example of a textual variation is at the end of the Gospel of Mark, which has several different alternate endings depending on what translation you're using and what Greek manuscripts that particular translation is making use of. Manuscripts omitting Mark 16 verses 9 through 20 other manuscripts adding a shorter ending after verse 8, manuscripts adding a shorter ending as well as verses 9 through 20, manuscripts adding verses 9 through 20, manuscripts adding verses 9 through 20 with a notation. In some translations it will say, you know, there are some manuscripts that don't go beyond this point and, and other manuscripts that have this extra section, extra part of the chapter, a longer ending of chapter 16. And there are manuscripts adding verses 9 through 20 of uh, Matthew of uh, Mark chapter 16 without uh, mentioning that that's somewhat up in the air you know it just presents the whole thing as a part of the original gospel of Mark without mentioning that there are some other manuscripts that don't include some of the verses Luke chapter 21 verse 34, however, is my favorite example of a New Testament textual variation. And it happens to be a vegetarian one, or at least it is in the original Syriac Aramaic version of the Gospel of Luke. A vegetarian saying of Jesus, which very much resonates, fits right in with what we read in the Clementine homilies, the Gospel of the Hebrews, and the Gospel of the Ebionites, which presents Jesus as a vegetarian. But it reads differently in the Greek manuscripts of Luke 21, 34. Using the unvarnished New Testament, which is a great translation, based on Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, it says, Watch yourselves now. Don't let your hearts get sluggish with debauchery and drinking and the worries of life. And then all of a sudden that day comes upon you because it will spring like a trap on all those who inhabit the face of all the earth. That is the unvarnished New Testament based on the Greek of Luke 21 34 and you can look up that same verse online there are many different translations online they all say the same thing basically debauchery refers to excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures but if you examine the Syriac Aramaic translation of Luke 21 34, it has a vegetarian saying of Jesus. Jesus says, Be on guard so that your hearts do not become heavy with the eating of flesh and with the intoxication of wine and with the anxiety of the world and that day come upon you suddenly for as a snare it will come upon all those who dwell upon the surface of the earth. A vegetarian saying of Jesus that reads a bit different than the Greek manuscript of that same verse. Today on Spiritual Awakening Radio, Loaves Without the Fishes in Early Christian Writings. If you'd like to receive links to the various articles by Keith Akers I referred to. If you'd like to receive a link to my booklet on the vegetarianism of 
the Jesus movement, sometimes called the Nazareans, the great great grandchildren of the Essenes, Ebionites, you know, that original group of disciples based in Jerusalem led by James the Just, sometimes also called the, the Hebrew Christians or Jewish Christians. If you'd like to read my article on the vegetarianism of early Christianity, Christianity Before Paul, or learn more about the books I referred to earlier, The Gospel of Jesus in Search of His Original Teachings by John Davidson, The Lost Religion of Jesus by Keith Akers, Disciples by Keith Akers, and The Origin of Christianity by Charles Vaklevic. Just send me an email. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. James at spiritualawakeningradio.com. And if you're listening to this podcast by way of YouTube, just scroll down below to the notes section below and you'll see various links referred to on today's program. Loaves Without the Fishes in Early Christian Writings. Another installment of my Vegan Veg series. Thanks for listening. Tune in again next time for another edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio.